necessary. Let's continue. We talk about the accounting cycle. Our accounting transaction will go in a cycle, which is a process of transactions, or sorry, process of steps to be recorded. We start with the, the first step, which is recognizing, measuring, and journalizing the transaction. This is the first step. Because normally to record the transaction, we will have a document, either receipt of payment, either whatever type of document we have for a transaction to record that transaction. Then we go for our second step, which is posting the transaction after we, journal we journalize the transaction in our journal. We need to post it in the ledger, OK? which is second type of books. By the way, the accounting books, which we're going to learn, we have the journal. We have the ledger. We're going to learn how to record the transaction in those types of books. So first, we journalize the transaction. Second, we post the transaction in the ledger. So the action of writing the transaction in the journal, we call it journalizing. And the action of writing the transaction in the ledger, we call it posting. OK, so that's what we have, journalizing and posting. Step number three, we have prepared an unadjusted trial balance. Also, we're going to learn how to do trial balance where we put our debts and credit accounts. I will explain to you what does debt and credit mean. Then we have journalized uh, and post adjusting entries. Then we do the adjusted trial balance. Then we have to prepare the financial statements, journalize the post closing entry, prepare the post closing trial balance. And then like this, we finish. By the way, nowadays, while all the uh, companies that are using uh, um, softwares to do the accounts, so we some of these steps is done by the system. So what is done by system? Posting in the ledger done by the system, preparing this system. Uh, also preparing this is by system. Preparing this is by system. Preparing this is by system. All of this is by system. What we do, we do only journalizing the transaction. OK, then we do journalizing the post entry adjusting. Then we do journalizing the post closing entries. Those what we do. The rest of the things preparing reports all nowadays done by system. But we still need to learn what are those the steps the system is doing because we need to understand the things behind the scene. So the accounting cycle, as I was explaining, during each financial year, a sequence of accounting procedures called accounting cycle is performed. Start with analyze of business transactions through source documents and with preparation of financial statements. The cycle represents the flow of information from the beginning of the recording process to the preparation of financial reports. The steps in the cycle are performed in sequence and are repeated in each period. So we do same steps each financial period. What are the steps of the accounting cycle? First, getting the source document. To record any transaction in our journal, we need to have the source document, which is a document supporting our uh, record. Source documents include cash receipts, check spots, purchase invoice, sales invoice, utility bills. All of those are documents include information related to transaction we want to record. Then we go to journal. This is, as I mentioned, our first book of accounts. What we write in the journal, actually normally we have various journals or one general journal, it depends, and that's what we're going to learn it later. Then we have the ledger, which are transaction of similar significance. You will understand later that the difference between journal and ledger. The journal, we record the transaction day by day. Like each day we record all the transaction happen per day. The ledger, we are uh, what we call it classifying the transactions we have in the journal 
in accounts in the ledger. What are the transactions belong to similar accounts? We put it in the ledger. Then we have the trial balance, which is we put the debts equal to credit. You will ask me, Miss, what does e debt and credit? I will tell you, we're going to explain now. Each account, when it's been debt, when it's been credit. Then we do the adjusting entries. Adjusting entries for any error may happen, and possibility of error, it's there. Example of errors may be error in entering the transaction. When you write the transaction in the system, you write it uh, with mistake, maybe with amount, maybe with account, it depends. We have the accruals and prepayments. This is what we're going to learn it in the adjusting chapter, where we need. Uh, if you remember when you talk about the accrual basis, we learn that uh, so we have to recognize the revenue or expenses belong to this financial period, even is being yet to be paid. So that what we call it accruals and rep repayments. I'm going to explain it in details. Then we have post adjusted trial balance. It's similar with the previous trial balance, but added to it the adjusted entries is also debts and credits. Then we have our financial statements. Um, our financial statements, we have actually three, but we got, we're going to learn in our classes here two of it. First, the profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Second, the uh, financial position statement. Those are the things what we're going to learn during our classes. So we'll, we will learn how to record the transaction in the journal. We will learn how to post the transaction in the ledger. We will learn how to prepare a trial balance. We will learn how to do the adjusting entries and we will learn how to prepare financial statements. All of those steps which are part of the accounting cycle, it will be the steps of our classes. Let's continue. Before we start recording the transaction, we need to understand what does double entry bookkeeping. If you remember, we were talking about the dual aspect, right? And we mentioned in each transaction we will have, okay, sorry, before each transaction, we were talking about the dual aspect and we said there is two aspects in the accounting, which are the assets and claims against those assets. So that would also lead us to what we call a double entry bookkeeping. Earlier, when they were recording that transaction, sorry, when they were recording that transaction, they were only recording the transaction with one side. That was single entry bookkeeping. So let's say we pay uh, money for ex for uh, electricity as example. So they will just write we pay money. They will deduct money from the cash, but we don't know this money goes where. After a while, they noticed that there was so big difficulty to match the things together to know, OK, I pay money. This money goes well. What account? And all of this was so difficult to follow up till they created what we call it the double entry bookkeeping. This double entry bookkeeping is relying 100% on the dual aspect, which is assets equals to liabilities plus owner's equity which we mentioned after each transaction, this one should be always equal to each other. This equation should be always correct after each transaction. Whatever we pay, get money, do whatever it is, this transaction should be correct. And this, sorry, this equation should be correct. First, let's talk what is bookkeeping and is bookkeeping different than the accounting? I will tell you yes. For that reason, we are when you are in the degree, you are graduating from BACC with degree of accounting, you will not work as just bookkeeper. Your job will not be just only recording the transaction. You will work as accountant, which is getting the report and um, uh, interpret the reports. Bookkeeping is only recording the transaction, which is the basic step of the accounting but you as accountant, you should learn the rest. So bookkeeping involves only the basic level of accounting. Example, the identifying and recording of economic events. And therefore, bookkeeping is only a part of accounting process. Uh, it's, uh, this process is include identifying, 
measuring, recording, and communicating. When we go to the bookkeeping, bookkeeping doesn't include the measuring and communicating, only identify the transaction and record the transaction. Because decision of measuring, decision of using specific accounting method is a decision of the accountant, not the bookkeeper. Uh, communicating, getting the report and communicate the reports to the to the users of accounting uh, information is a job of the accounting, not the accountant, not the bookkeeper. So that's what we need to keep in our mind. When we compare between bookkeeping and accounting, we have the scope. Bookkeeping is very limited scope. Earlier stages of accounting process, identifying and recording, while the accounting is wider scope. Whole accounting process, identifying, recording, interpreting, communicating, planning, and making decisions. Those are included in the accounting. When we talk about purpose, the purpose of bookkeeping is provide financial information to enable the accountant to proceed with the remaining stages of accounting process. While the accounting, the purpose of the accounting is to produce the financial statements. If you remember, in the first class, we talk about producing financial statements for final users, which we divide them to internal and external users. So this is the job of the accountant to produce those statements for final users. So produce financial statements to enable users and interested parties to make comparison plans, forecasts, and decisions. Those, this is the job of the accountant and this is the comparison between bookkeeping and accounting double entry system if you remember we compare between bookkeeping and accounting and now we are talking about the double entry system which we said it's also part of the dual aspect so double entry system bookkeeping is based on the double entry system, which means that we record the dual effect of a business transaction. We said any transaction has two effects, dual effect. Every business transaction will affect two or more items for the basic accounting equation. Since these items are recorded in the accounts, every time a transaction is recorded, it will affect at least two accounts. And the total debts must always be equal to total credits. If you remember in our previous class when we, I was putting the accounting equation and asking you to analyze the transaction, and I was telling you that guys, yes, that we, as now the example we give, we pay salaries by cash, okay? So I was first asking you, what are the two accounts involved? This word two accounts, it's from the dual aspect, okay? Is it from the double entry bookkeeping? Any transaction we have should have two accounts minimum. Word minimum means maybe we have more than two accounts are involved in one transaction. When we say here the total debt should always must always be equal to total credits. So here I'm going to explain to you what does debt, what does a credit mean. Here is the, what we call it, uh, the book of accountant. This slide, you have to memorize it, same as you memorize your name. Each one of those accounts, each one of those categories, when is increased, go to debit or goes to credit. When it decreases, goes to debit or go to credit. You have to keep it in your mind. Okay. If you read here, again, we are coming out from our accounting equation. Assets equals to liabilities plus owner's equity. And if you see, we divide the owner's equity to the four types or four components of owner's equity, which are capital, drawings, revenue, and expenses. For each one of it, I put, let's say assets, when it's increased, it goes to the debit side. When it's decreased, it goes to the credit side. Similar, we have drawings and expenses. So I will put it for you in one color to you be able to memorize. 
we have assets we have drawings we have expenses those three acting similar which is when is increasing go to the debt when is decreasing go to the credit side by the way any transaction we need to record it like this debt in the top credit in the button okay then we write the account name so to record any transaction you need to know which account goes to debt side which account goes to the credit side you write the debt account in the top the credit account in the button and i'm going to explain you later also how to record the transaction in your uh, journal okay so the first step to analyze any transaction is what are the accounts involved? Second, those accounts increase or decrease. Third, those accounts belong to which category? Fourth, they are debt or credit. So when we are asking whether it's debt or credit, we need to come back to this slide, which is showing us each category how it goes whether debt or credit when is increase or decrease you remember i said assets drawings and expenses they behave same they act same when in when is increase go to the debit when is decrease go to the credit liabilities capital and revenue those three behave same when is decrease go to the debit when is increase go to the credit so that what you need to remember always what are the categories acting same you will remember assets drawings expenses are acting same which is when increase we put it in the debit side when decrease we put it in the credit side while liabilities capital and revenue when increase we put it in the credit side when decrease we put it in the debit side which means playing verse versa after we learn the debt and the credit we learn that now we will go to the transaction analysis when any transaction happen we, we need to analyze the transaction is to we know uh, what are the accounts involved and those accounts go with whether debit or credit business transactions are the economic events of the business recorded by accountants examples of economic events or business transaction include purchases of goods sales of goods salary paid to an employee etc before the accountant records a transaction in the business books each transaction must be analyzed in terms of its effect on the components of the basic accounting equation this analysis must identify the specific items in fact affected the amount of the change in each item and whether go to the debt or to the credit so let me remove this one so we continue on analyzing the transaction since the equality if you remember in our accounting equation the equality which is assets equals to liabilities plus owners equity so since the equality of the basic equation must be maintained each transaction must have a dual effect on the question on the equation because remember we said is dual uh, bookkeeping is dual aspect so for example if an asset is increased any one of the following must also occur in order to the equation to remain same i already asked about it last class if you remember either decrease in another asset which is plus and minus in same side or increase in a specific liability or owner's equity which is increase in the another side or combination of those the main concern is to keep our accounting equation correct which is assets equals to liabilities plus 
owner's equity. Okay? So those we should always keep in our mind that any transaction we do should keep those uh, account, this accounting equation correct, that our assets should be equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. So what are steps of uh, analyzing of a transaction? First, we need to set what are the accounts involved? Example, cash, salaries, accounts payable, whatever it is. So first, we need to see from the sentence, what are the accounts involved? Second, for each account involved, what type of account is it? Whether it's asset, liability, or owner's equity. Third, is that account balance increase or decrease from this transaction? Is it plus or minus? Fourth, should the account be debited or credit? Then we record the, tra the transaction. So there are five steps for analyzing the transaction. First, what are the accounts involved? Second, each of these accounts uh, belongs to which category, whether asset liability or owner's equity? Third, is it increase or decrease? Fourth, as it goes to debit or credit, then we need to record the transaction. So this is how we analyze the transaction. Let's take example. Transaction Ashraf is a person decides to start a consultancy firm. He opens up a new company, which is called Forever Excellent. He invests 20,000 as cash, cash as capital. The effect of this transaction on accounting equation is what? He decided to invest 20,000 cash as capital. So the two accounts involved are cash and capital. This is the first step. Second step, belong to what category? Cash belongs to asset category. Capital belongs to owner's equity category, which is capital. Third, increase or decrease. The cash in the company increase because Ashraf give money to the company. So we are thinking from the point of view of the company, the cash in the company increase. The capital is also increased. Before, we don't have capital. Now, Ashraf invest money. So the capital increase. So it's plus. Then, the cash when is increased as asset, it goes to the debit or credit side. It will go to the debit side because asset when increased, go to the debit side. Capital increase, it goes to the debit or credit side, it will go to the credit side because it's capital and increase. This is what we call it analyzing the transaction, which is following five steps. Five steps. First, you need to decide what are the accounts involved. Second, you need to decide what uh, each account belongs to which category. Third, you need to decide this effect of the transaction, whether plus or minus. Fourth, each account goes to debit or credit. Five, recording the transaction. Let's continue. Another transaction. Forever Excellent, which is a company, purchases a machine costing 5,000 ringgit and pay by cash. To start step by step. First step, what are the two accounts involved? Uh, machine as well as cash. Yes, machine uh, as well as cash. Very good. Machine belong to which category? Asset, liability or owner's equity? Asset. No. Asset. Cash belongs to which category? Asset. Very good. Okay. The machine increase or decrease? Machine increase, ma'am. The cash increase or decrease? Decrease, ma'am. Decrease. So the machine as asset increase will go to the debit or credit? Debit, ma'am. Debit. The cash as asset decrease will go to the debit or credit? Credit, ma'am. Very good. This is analyzing of the transaction. Thank you, dear. 
So as we mentioned, we have two accounts involved, our equipment and cash. Both of them are assets. So the equipment increase, so it will go to the debit side. The cash decrease will go to the credit side. Thank you. Hassan started business by investing 55,000 in cash on August 1st. First step, what are the two accounts involved? Cash and capital. Cash and capital, that's good. Cash is asset account or liability or owner's equity? Asset. Capital is owner's equity. Yes, it's owner's equity and it's capital. So cash increase or decrease? Uh, cash increases. The capital increase or decrease? Capital also increases. So the cash will increase, go debit or credit? Debit. Capital will increase, debit or credit? Credit. What? Credit. Credit, yes. So like this, the transaction will be debit, cash, credit, credit, credit. capital. And the amount is 55,000. You can either put it for before, or we can write here like debit, credit, and we write the amount. How we can post this transaction in the ledger? Ledger, it's another accounting book which we do arrange our account based on the account itself. If you see in the journal, this is what we write in the journal, okay? If you see in the journal, we will do the daily transactions uh, each transaction we cannot record to the debit and the credit side. So birthday we will have a lot of transactions. So this is we call it the journal. The ledger we got to open a different book. Each page has dif different account. So we cannot to rearrange the account or the transactions. We are in the journal based on the ledger. So if we go here, normally the ledger we can present it with what we call a T account because we got to draw like letter T. The left side will be the debt side, the right side will be the credit side. Each account will have one T account. So here we have two accounts which are cash and capital. How we can post this transaction in the ledger? The cash in the transaction is in the debit side, so we have to write in the debit side of the account. What we need to write? First, we need to write the amount. Second, we write the other side of the transaction, like here, the debit cash. We are writing in the debit side of the cash. What we write? We write the amount, then we write the other side of the transaction. So now we post half of the transaction, this half. The other half of the transaction, we need to go to the T account of the capital, the ledger of the capital. It's the capital, it's in the credit side. So we have to write in the credit side of the capital. What we write? We put the amount, then we write the other side of the transaction, which is cash. Like this, we call it, this is, we call it journal. And this we call it posting in the ledger. So motor van is bought for 30,000 cash on August 2nd. Uh, Ma'am, we have our two accounts now uh, for van and motor van and cash. Yes, we have cash and we have motor, motor. van. This is the first step. Second step, cash is what? Asset liability of those equity is asset. asset. Good. Motor van. They're also asset. Asset, good. Cash increase or decrease? Ma'am, cash decrease. Motor van increase or decrease? Increase, ma'am. Increase. So cash decrease will go debit or credit? Credit, ma'am. Motor van increase will go debit or credit? Debit. Debit. So like this, we're going to have to write the transaction. We're going to have to write the amount, which is 30,000. Debit, motor van, credit, the cash. Cash. Yes. 
Then let's do the posting in the ledger. We need to open the two T account of post accounts. That we have the cash and we have motor van. Cash, if you remember from previous transaction, we already have. We have 55,000 in the dead side. So let's write it. We have 55,000. This one from the previous transaction, because the ledger is going to be uh, uh, following each other, OK? So from this transaction, how we can post it? We have that motor van. So we go to the debt side of the motor van. We write the amount, which is 30,000. We write the other side of the transaction, which is cash. So we put, we post this part of the transaction. The other part of the transaction is this one. So we go to the cash. It's in the credit side of the cash. So we go to the credit side of the cash. We write the amount. Then we put motor van. So like this, we post the other side of the transaction. Let's go to the example number, the third part of that transaction. OK. Fixture bought on credit from Echo SDM PhD on 2000. First, what are the two accounts involved? OK. Uh, miss, uh, fixtures and uh, account payable. So we have fixtures and they bought on a credit, so it's account payable. Or as I said earlier, we can use the company name. So fixtures is asset liability or owner's equity. Sorry, miss. Fixtures, asset liability or owner's equity. Uh, fixtures will go to. Uh, wait a minute. Assets. Yes. Accounts payable. Accounts payable will go to liability. Liability, that's good. Then the fixtures, which is asset, increase or decrease? Uh, increase. The account payable increase or decrease? Increase. So the assets or the fixtures when increased, go debit or credit? It'll go to debit. Accounts payable when increased, go debit or credit? It'll go to credit. Yes. So the transaction, it will be 2000. The debit side, we have fixtures. Credit side, we have account payable. Then we need to post this transaction in the ledger. So we have fixtures, account. And we have the accounts payable account. We don't have a balance from before, so let's post this transaction fixtures. Oh, sorry, I didn't write here that our credit is that fixture as a credit account variable. Okay. So fixtures is in the dead side. So we go that side of the fixtures, we put 2000. What we write next to it? The other side of the transaction, which is account variable. The account variable here, like this, we post the first part of the transaction. The second part of the transaction we need to post it. So we go to the credit side of the account payable. We have 2000, the credit side. And what we write, we write the fixtures. We write the other side of the account of the transaction. Like this, we write the transaction in the this writing here. We call it journal or journalizing. And this here, we call it posting in the ledger. 
Let's go to another example. Pay the amount owing in cash to ECHO STM PhD, please. Uh, we have cash and accounts payable. We have cash and we have accounts payable. Cash uh, is asset liability or owner's equity? Asset. Asset. Accounts payable? Liability. Liability. So the asset is increased or decreased? The cash? Uh, decrease. The account payable? Decrease as well. So the cash when is as asset with even is decreased. Is it debt or credit? Uh, credit. Credit, yes. Account variable as liability when is decreased is debit or credit? And uh, debit. Yes, so like this, we write the transaction. How much was the amount? Actually, it's for the echo SDM PhD is 2000. So the amount is 2000. We have uh, debit. Account payable. We have a credit cash. So like this, we write in the journal. Let's post in the ledger. So we have cash and we have account payable. So if you remember, we have from previous transactions so the cash from before we have uh, 55,000 in the debt side, 30,000 in the credit side. 55,000 plus capital and uh, 30,000 motor van in the credit side. Account payable, we have before 2,000 fixtures in the credit side. So let's post this transaction. The debit side, account payable, which is 2,000. What we write next to it, the other side of the transaction, which is cash. Then we go to the cash account. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's my mistake. Sorry. So first we go to the uh, first we go to the account variable. We go to the debt side. We have two thousand cash like this we post the first part of the transaction the second part we go to the credit side of the cash we put 2000 we write the other side of the transaction which is the account variable so we post the other part of the transaction if you remember also we open we how we get a full example how to write the, the transaction in the journal then how to post it in the ledger, then how to do the balancing of the ledger. So the balance in a TIA account can be determined as follow. If the total debt side is greater than the total credit side, then we have called it a debt balance. If the total of the credit side is greater than the total of debt side, then we call it a credit balance. If a total debt side is equal to total of credit side, then we have what is we call a zero balance. This is one, and this is example also talking about balancing of the ledger T account. In this example, the debt exceeds the credit by 10,300. If you see, this is one example about one account we have. This is a debt side, this is a credit side. You will see we have exceed here because to be balanced, to uh, should per side equal to 21,000 by this was this side is less so we add this uh, balance which is we add it in the credit side but we call it debt balance because the debt side of the account is bigger 
So in this example, the debt exceed the credit in 10,300 ringgit. Therefore, the account has the balance of 10,300. The abbreviations CD and BD stand to carry down and brought down. For me, till this level, like when you do the balancing here, it's enough. Let me just draw it for you. So when you are working in the transaction till this till this point, it's enough. Till here, okay? So for me, just to close the accounts, close the T account, then find what is called, uh, find the balance, whether it's debt balance or credit balance, then it's done, you don't need to bring it down, okay? So till carry it down, it's enough. Okay, so when you are asked in any question in the exam about uh, or like even exercise about closing the T account or balancing the T account, you just transfer all that transaction to the debt and credit side based on it from the journal. Then find the balance, whether it's debt balance or maybe is a credit balance. Then do the balancing. Done. Okay. So let's go to what we call it cash and bank transactions. This type of transactions are when there is one side of the transaction is either cash or bank. So when the cash or bank involved in the transaction, we have two types, either receive money or pay money. Cash and bank normal balance is debt, which means when we receive money, the account cash or bank will be debt side in the journal and when we pay money it will be credit and that's what we know because the cash or the bank they are assets when we receive money means is increase when asset increase we'll go to the debit side cash and bank they are assets when we pay money they will decrease so when asset decrease it will go to the credit side so that's what we need to keep in our mind let's take example of cash and bank transactions. Office uh, machinery, let's go to debit. Okay. Cash is debit. Cash is what? Oh, credit. Yeah, okay. So debit, office machinery, credit is cash. That's good. Second transaction, both lorry for cash. Lorry in debit. Lorry in debit, okay. Cash is decreasing, so in credit. Yeah, cash decreasing, so it's credit. The third transaction. Bank in debit. Bank in debit, that's good, yes. Loan in credit. Okay, number four, paid stationary by check. Uh, stationary account and debit. Stationary account and debit and? Bank. Bank in credit, that's good. Okay, miss. Um, debit side is rent and credit side is uh, bank. Yes, very good. Thank you. Um, debit side drawings. Yes. Um, credit side bank. Yes, here we put drawing because it's withdrawal by the owner. So what is the debit side or the credit side for this transaction? Owner put cash into the business. Dear, here as a business, we receive cash or we pay cash. What is the credit side? Um, owner. When the owner invests money in the company, what we call that account? What we call the account when the owner invest money in the company? Um, we call it capital. Uh, okay, Miss. so washing machine debit. Okay. And then uh, credit is a uh, bank. But did you see that this washing machine is for the company or for the owner? This washing machine the company, the owner buy it for himself. 
when the owner withdraws something for himself, what we call that account? Do you remember when we talk about owner's equity and when we talk about separate entity, we said separate entity, it means transaction related to the owner are separate than those related to the company. And we said the two accounts managing the relation between owner and company is capital and drawing. Capital when the owner put money in the company, drawing when the owner withdraw money from the company. So here what we need to use, capital or drawings? So drawings. Okay, drawing. So drawing, go debit or credit? Debit. Yes, drawings. And what is our credit? Bank. Bank. Yes, thank you. So those what we call it cash and bank transaction, which are when one side of the uh, transaction is uh, cash or bank. So if you remember, we were talking about ledger, we talk about the debt and the credit, and we talk about how to write in the journal and how to post in the ledger. That things we have it also here in those slides. It's kind of revision for the debt and the credit details. It's kind of what is the general journal and general ledger is what we talk about it, that how we can record our transactions. What are the steps? Steps same as what we did. It's kind of analyzing the transaction. Then we write in the ledger. This is example of how you can write your journal the debit and the credit. This is how you can write in your journal the debt and the credit, how you can write the transaction in the journal. You put the date, you put in the title and explanation what is the account, so that, uh, the account which for post the debit and the credit amount, and the explanation. Also, we have what we call it compound entry. Compound entry, if you remember, in the previous transaction, we mostly have only two accounts involved. But sometimes we have more than two accounts involved, which are an example. Let's say if the owner invests money as a capital and he put half money in the cash box and half money in the bank. So like this, we will have two accounts in the debit side. One is a cash, second one is a bank, and we have one account in the credit side, which is the capital. This type, we call it compound entry. So the compound entry is when we have more than one, uh, when we have more than two accounts involved. This we call it compound entry. So to illustrate, as example, Hassan purchased office equipment from Iron SDM PhD, costing 7,000. He paid 2,000 in cash and the balance on credit. So like this, how we can write this transaction? You will see that we have office equipment in the debit side. In the credit side, we have two accounts, which are cash and Ion SDM PhD for that credit, uh, for the on credit amount. So this is what we call it compound entry. So again, the entry can be in two types. One is a compound entry, uh, sorry, one is a normal one, which we have one debit, one credit side, uh, one account in the debit, one account in the credit. And the second type is the compound entry, when we have more than one account in one side. So either one debit, two credit, or two debit, two credit, two, de uh, two debit, one credit, it's possibility of having more than one account in one side. So that's what we call about compound entry. Another example, during the months, the company paid cash 1,700 for expenses incurred, such as salaries 600, building rent 900, utilities 200. So what, uh, how we can write the transaction? We have the debit, salaries, rent, and utilities. The credit, we have the cash. So you, if you see here, we have three accounts in the debit side and one account in the credit side. 
about the ledger, same as what I told you, after we write the transaction, we do the T account. Uh, by the way, uh, you can do the T account or the ledger at the end of the transaction. After you write all the transactions in the journal, you can open T account for each one of the accounts. So like this, uh, you can do your T account for each one of your accounts. So if you see like here, they are doing the T account for the previous transactions. Of the ledger, after you fill that transaction in the ledger, you need to see to make the balance. Example, this company, we have. this is a T account. We have the debt, we have the credit. If we see, OK, just ignore those three, the last line. We need to, to sum the right side and the left side, and we need to add a balance. So this balance will be either debt balance or the credit balance. If the balance is in the credit side, we call it debt balance because the debt side is higher. If the balance is in the credit side, the debit side, we call it credit balance because the credit side is higher. So balancing, which means after you do the T account of each account you have, you need to do to, to do the balancing. Which is uh, you sum post sides, your debt side and your credit side, you sum both of them and you uh, put a balance for, for the side which is lesser to make it equal to the other side. 